What is it that makes sharing our stories so powerful? And why is it so important then to share that with others? Well, first of all, there is actual psycho like psychological and scientific proof that when you share your story, um, there it actually creates healing and for not only the person sharing it, but for the person hearing it. Um, I can't remember, it was an article in psychology today, you know, but anyways, it was this whole thing about when we do that, um, it creates, I mean, you guys are all very familiar with neuropathways and all of that, but it, it creates something in the brain that, that helps stimulate healing, both when you're sharing it, but also for the person that's listening to it. In biblical terms, I see that as every time you share your story, it pulls it a little bit further out of the dark and a little bit more into the light. And, you know, if you're talking about healing, whether it's from an addiction or recovery or uh, I mean, whatever, whatever we're talking about, you can't deal with or heal or recover from something that you don't talk about. And so I just think it's so important to take that, like, like we said, like we keep saying, you know, that first trusted person, um, even though it's scary because it's, it's so important for healing process, whether you're a betrayed person or you're the one that's made bad decisions or whatever it is, um, because not only it helps heal you, but it gives permission to other people to be able to then share their story. That's something that I found so profound the very first time I shared my story in a group larger than just like one or two people on a platform. And I just was like, here it is, like, but here's where God's working. How many people afterward said, oh my gosh, like, I've never told anybody this or me too, or, and some of it pertains to the same topic as pornography or infidelity or some stuff like that. And some of them, some of, some of it didn't, some of it was just completely different subjects, but when we're vulnerable and when we are able to kind of put down that fear and step into, you know what, I'm just going to glorify God through this and see what he does with it. It gives permission for other people to feel safe, to be able to do that as well. Yeah. Um, Paul Young, author, uh, we've actually had him on the show. Um, he said, I was, I was on some other podcast I was listening and he said that the reason why writing stories is so powerful for him is that he can have a perspective that um, he has on a certain situation or topic or whatever. And if he just says his opinion from the start, someone can reject that opinion. But he said there's this crazy, beautiful thing where a story is able to sneak in past people's defenses. And then when they see the truth in reality, it's already inside and it and expands and you're much more receptive to it. And, uh, you know, I like... I know even saying his name, there's some connotations to that, but like what he's saying is true. And I think that's why Jesus spoke in parables and in stories, because people were able to realize like, oh, he's talking about me. Got it. Okay. You know, um, an example in my life, um, and I, I recently uh, talked about this, that I remember uh, Derek Jeter shortstop for the New York Yankees uh, hit his 3000th hit and it was a home run. And I remember watching, I was sitting by myself watching it on ESPN and he hits the home run and I just start crying. And, um, I, it's funny because I've, I've shared that before and a reaction is just like, <laughs> why are you crying? <laughs> like you gotta, you just gotta hit. That's just a home run. Like it's, it's not a big deal. But if I, and I have, I've shared this story where I realized that when I was 12, 13 and I made an amazing play and the reaction I got from the crowd, uh, and from the parents of the guys that were on my team is that I was a ball hawk, that I somehow had done this amazing thing, but had this really negative experience. And when I'm watching Derek Jeter hit this unbelievable accomplishment in his career, solidifies him in the hall of fame, people are just showering him with praise and everything. It's this incredible moment. Like for me, telling that story of when I was 13 helps you make sense of why that moment watching him hit, get that hit was so important to me and why it made me so emotional because it's, it's something I didn't receive or, and it could be any, it could be the other way too. It's something 
you know, that you did receive that you shouldn't have, right? But I just think that our stories allow people to be more receptive to the reality or the truth of what we all experience. And I, and I really do think that our stories, because they can sneak in past people's defenses, is allow self-discovery to happen that wouldn't have happened any other way because they can reject you from the start. Yeah, and, and to build on that, I, I think the brilliance of stories and, you know, what we see Jesus using was how people were allowed to find themselves in the story. And like you were saying, Ashley, people find a piece they relate to. Uh, I, I think of the brilliance of Jesus telling the story of the lost son or the prodigal son, that in telling that story, he was simultaneously making a point to his disciples uh, about what God was like. He was making a point to the re religious leaders about their heart attitude. He was making a point to the tax collectors and sinners about how God felt about that. Like everyone listening was identifying with something and going, oh, oh, you know, and being made to think. Whereas if, and I think the same happens when we share our stories of struggle or recovery or pain or whatever. Um, you know, if, if I share my story of walking through addiction and coming to pure desire and what my wife and I walk through, you know, people are able to identify with a part of it versus if I just say, you know, guys, looking at pornography is really bad and hurtful to your wife. It, it's like, well, that then was just to the men and, and women are like, yeah, that's right. But they're not, they're not really identifying. So I, I think people see ourselves in the story and connect. And, you know, what you were referring to, Ashley, is what I would call it's, it's whole brain activity because in a story, people's left brain is the words and the logic. They have to process that. But the right brain is story and emotion and creativity and art. And, and so you're kind of engaging with them in a holistic way. And uh, the other thing uh, that I would just echo you said too, Trevor, the, that it's disarming to people when you tell a story. Because if I start, you know, especially in today's day and age, if I start talking about scientific data, people are like, well, I don't trust that. You know, well, I'm sure those scientists were bought off or paid. Or even if I'm quoting stats, people will be like, well, I wonder who the researchers were. Or what questions did they ask? Or they probably only asked a couple of people, and now they're twisting the stats. Um, if I just talk ideas uh, or platitudes, people are like, well, I don't agree with that. You know, and your truth's your truth. You know, I don't need that. But when I tell a story, people can't go, well, I don't believe that. I mean, if they, if they trust us at all, or we're someone that's a friend, like, your, your story is real. And, and I can't reject that that's what happened to you. And if I'm see, seeing myself in it, a part of me is open to going, well, maybe that could happen for me too. Um, and so I, I think when we recognize all that, just say, man, even if you feel, as so often can happen, kind of in Christian circles where we've unfortunately created this category of like the sensational stories are the only ones that matter. And unless you came from some, you know, drug addicted, gang fested, you know, background and then met Jesus, your story doesn't like, well, I don't really have a testimony. It's like, no, it, it's not what you've done or the behaviors themselves that matter. It's your personal connection with it, what you felt, what you experienced it. And so even if you're thinking, well, my struggle was just, and then fill in the blank, it's like, well, yeah, and maybe for many, many other people, they're just going through the same thing. And so don't discount what's happened because it's, you feel like it's not as sensational as someone else's. Because a lot of us, we, we need to figure out where is God at in those places that maybe aren't, you know, the, the crazy story. They're just the everyday life of parenting and kids and finances and jobs and careers and, and the stuff we all wrestle with. When someone can tell a, a story about what happened, how God met them in some of the everyday stuff, that's as powerful as anything. So that, that's what's beautiful about stories, whether they are about this huge moment or just a tiny thing. If we see God's activity, God's goodness, a blessing, we're like, wow, that's awesome. And we relate to it. Uh, just random. Is it like two thirds of the Bible is narrative? Is that a true stat? It's like, it's a high percentage of the Bible. I don't believe that stat, Trevor. No, I don't, oh. <laughs> I don't actually wow. know. Wow. That sounds, it's, that seems pretty okay, accurate. Okay, I heard it somewhere from someone who's credible. Um, but I was thinking about it, and I don't know why, but the quote, a quote I heard from John Piper one time said, the point of biblical stories addressing narrative and specifically the Old Testament and then the Gospels is, um, is not that we know in our heads but that we feel in our bones that God is for us. And I think that that's, even God knew that as he's inspiring the writing of scripture, that narrative, like story is important. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is open up to your Bible and there it is. 